out. So here we go. Hey, hey everybody. Here it is, day five of Glacier Con, and today is a glazathon, or glazing extravaganza, if you prefer. We are going to be glazing with amber color glazes, and I'm really excited because not only do I get to be one of the very first people to test out the brand new Potter's Choice glazes, I'm giving away 10 boxes of these, so 10 other lucky folks are going to get these glazes too. So hello everybody coming on in. We're going to do some tests. Now I was just talking to Kara from Amico Brent and she says that they really haven't done a lot of sampling with this because uh, production shut down. So I'm going to be testing them out um, based on these little tiny bottles and uh, we'll see how they look on Sunday because there will be a kiln opening on Sunday. That's right, there will. So let's do this. All right, so I have some pieces that I'm going to glaze with the new glazes. I also have some of their other glazes and more recent glazes. I'm going to show you some of those examples and I am going to use some of those glazes during this hour. So we'll see if I can actually get to it. So we're a bit out of focus. So Kev, are we it, sharp? It's come to sharp. It's, it's sharp now. All right. So maybe sometimes at the beginning it's a little out of focus, but now we are we're crystal all right so here i have a bowl that i glazed in wasabi celadon and then i put iron luster over it so on the rim and you can actually really see it on the back do you see that i'm going to be glazing something with this we'll do that combo another combo that i have from their more recent glazes is this vase here and this is a combo of blue stone on the bottom and then their river rock on the top. So you see you get this brown and then there's a bit of an overlap and to the blue stone. So this is a really great glaze. I found this blue stone on texture is gorgeous. This glaze right here is in the sample pack, but it's not brand new. This is a glaze that they already have out, so you can get this glaze if you want it. So that's this blue stone and river rock. So these are out. You don't have to wait for these. These are their newest glazes, but they're not the brand spanking new glazes. And then let's see what I got over here. I got a couple other samples. This uh, was from my last kiln opening. This is Blue Lagoon with Emerald Falls on top. So these are the ones that came out, I believe, last summer. I think they came out from Amico and they're in their Potter's Choice line. And here is Blue Lagoon by itself on a test tile. And here is Emerald Falls by itself on a test tile. And what I did here is I put Blue Lagoon three coats on the entire piece and then Emerald Falls on the top half three coats as well, overlapping the Blue Lagoon. And it's just this really pretty nice combo and it does work on texture. Although when you put that second coat, that second color on top, it, it might hide some of your texture. So keep that in mind when you're using it. And then the other one that I have here, this is the Satin Orbe. And this is a nice one. It's more of a blue tone, like a blue, French blue, I would say. And this one I actually haven't tested yet. So I'll need to be testing this one out. I just have a test tile. So I see some people, uh, Jeannie has just bought these colors. They are nice. And I'm gonna tell you a secret on this right here. What you do is you put your river rock on first and you start about a third of the way down and you glaze from river rock a third of the way down up to the top, three coats. Then you put your blue stone on, on top of the river rock, stopping about a half inch from the very top. So you have that rim that's that nice dark brown and then you have the overlap and then you have the blue stone so you get that gradation happening and then i'll flip it around you can see both sides pretty cool Woohoo! Ah, karen's watching me on a 50 inch screen i'm i'm like the 50 foot woman now <laughs> 50 inch woman <laughs> that's almost close to my real height <laughs> that's what makes it so funny uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be glazing. I have already got some pieces bisced and waxed and prepared. I have two more things I'm going to show you the glazes on. Amico Aqua Celadon 
And on the rim here is Art Deco Green, so that's what I put on the very rim. So that gives you a nice combo. And then the last piece I have to show you that I have finished right here. Hey, Beth. Beth, whose birthday was yesterday, and she won the Mako Glaze Pack. Congratulations, Beth. And happy birthday. <laughs> so this mug I glazed with three of the Potter's Choice Celadons. I used Glacier on the top. I used Fog on the middle and Storm on the bottom. So it creates this ombre, and you can even see the ombre continues for the handle. Nice, right? Beautiful. So this is a really fun way to have a gradation, and I find the ombre effect works best when you have some texture. If it's just a plain mug like this with just smooth sides, the lines are really noticeable, and it doesn't blend quite as much as it will on something like this that has that texture, and it really helps hide where they come together and helps, you know, blend it a little more. So if you want to do an ombre effect, you might want to try doing it on your pieces with texture. Just a, just a little, <laughs> just a little tip. And I just saw someone said they're watching on an 80 inch screen. Woo! You win for big screen. Oh my goodness. I am larger than life then. Mm. Then my mug is huge. Okay. So, uh, what else do I want to share with you? As I was saying, I was speaking to Kara this morning, and we have some tips for the new glazes she wanted to share with me. She knew I was going to be doing a broadcast, and she wanted to give me these tips about the new glazes. And of course, as these roll out of production, probably next month and into May, I'm, I'm thinking beginning of May, they probably will have them, but we, we have to wait and see. Um, she wanted to make sure that I knew what... Uh, I should be doing for application, like specific things for each glaze. And, you know, every glaze is different and has their own personality. And so she wanted to make sure that I had the information I needed to get the best results, which is what I always want to share with you. So I will be telling you as we go along. But um, something Kara shared with me. Now, most of you might know Amico just celebrated their 100th anniversary. But did you know they're a family-owned company? So they were started 100 years ago. And today they're still run by the grandsons of the gentleman who started the company. And you know, we think of Amico as being this huge, giant, multinational company, and they are just right here in the US. They only have 150 employees. They are a small, family-run business. So when you're thinking about Amico, yeah, they are a big company as far as they make a lot of glazes, and they produce a lot, and they sell a lot, right? And they also own Brent, which makes wheels and other equipment. But they're just a family company. And, you know, like many of us, they've been affected by everything shutting down and the employees are working from home and those that can't, um, you know, they're at home kind of self-isolating. And Kara shared with me that they actually are paying all of their workers. So, you know, some of us are at home and we're not getting paid and it's very scary, but it's just good to know there's companies like Amico out there that are paying their workers and that those workers will have a job when all of this ends, whenever that may be, and they'll have something to go back to. So, Amico, you guys are my hero. I love them. So if you didn't love Amico before, you have to love Amico now. I didn't know any of this. I thought they were just a big, huge corporation. No, small family-owned business, paying their employees paychecks so that they can go on and support their own families and everything. So that just made me, you know, got me right here, right? All righty. So we're going to get going and do these glazes. And the, the new ones in here, and I'll actually tell you all that are in here. There is Vintage Gold, June Bug, Blue Spark, Blue Stone, which isn't brand new. It's a newer one, and I was showing you that. Copper Red and Flambe. So the Vintage Gold, the June Bug, and the Blue Spark are all metallics. The Copper Red and the Flambe are a gloss Copper Red glaze. So they have a really cool thing. They actually um, create a re localized reduction in the glaze. So many of us who have fired reduction firings before know about how gorgeous Copper Red glazes can be. Well, they have found a way to make the glaze reduce 
locally, like right there around the pot, so that you get a true copper red glaze in the, in the flambe and the copper red. They both are copper red glazes, although only one's called copper red. So we're gonna be using that, and we're gonna be using the other colors, and we're gonna put them all. So, and for me, do I buy direct from Amico? No, I get mine from Clayscapes Pottery. Clayscapes Pottery is actually doing free, are they doing free shipping right now? Uh, are they doing, what is, what yeah, is? Amico glazes have free shipping right now on pints from Clayscapes Pottery. That's where I get mine. So if you need some Amico glaze, Check out Clayscapes Pottery. Now, these new ones you cannot get. You can get the Blue Stone, but the others will not be out. We're thinking May. Depends on how long everything goes on. And I see there's uh, people watching me on their smartphone, their tablet, their desktop computer, and the big screen and the TV in case one, <laughs> in case one goes down, you won't lose me. I'll be there. All right, so I'm going to clear off a spot because we need a little space to do this. And if you all remember from my glazing the other day, I get a little messy. I need a bit of room to work. So we're going to scooch some things over and get ready to glaze. So I have these bisque pieces ready to go. And I have pieces that are hand built like this that has some really lovely texture. This is a mushroom plate. And then I have some wheel thrown mugs similar to the one that I threw for you all yesterday. So we're gonna use the glazes and we're gonna see the different results we get on a smooth sided piece, on a textured piece, on a flat plate right here. I also have a textured place, plate with vertical surface. So we'll see how it runs a bit. And um, yeah, and then we'll do some on a flat plate with no textures. So that's just, I'm like, I want to test it on everything. How many different pots can I test it on? All. Until I have no more glaze. That's what we will do. All right, so I think we're ready for our, to switch to our overhead camera and we'll work from there. And we're going to start using the, the new June bug. I can't wait. I'm excited. I have been, so I have a cat named Juniper. She's two. And we call her June Bug. That's her nickname, June Bug, or Junie B, but June Bug. She's our little June Bug. And when I found out that Amico is going to have a glaze called June Bug, I just, I knew I had to have it. Like, I couldn't even stand myself. <laughs> so here are two plates that we're going to do tests with. They are just Laguna B Mix. All the clay you see here is Laguna B Mix 5 with no grog. And I made these using GR Pottery Forms, their little rectangle plaque. Now these make great soap dishes or sponge holders, this size right here. And you can always put in holes for draining when you're making it though. It's too late now. And I see Amico's here watching. Hey, is that Kara? Hi, Kara. So I'm gonna zoom you all in just a tiny bit so you can come in closer. There we go. And I must apologize to the folks on Instagram. You just get the full view. But if you're watching on, on Instagram and I see people are commenting, where do you see the full view? If you want to see the full, full view, you can go to the Clayshare Facebook page, the Clayshare, well, Jessica Putnam Phillips YouTube page, the Vimeo.com and Clayshare.com. But if you go to ClaysshareCon.com, everything's there. How to get to all those other pages. All right, so I have got, before I even started, this is what I did. I did a little cheat sheet before I even started. I sat down, I wrote out some Amico glaze combos I've been wanting to try out. So these are just with their regular Potter's Choice and Celadon glazes. These aren't the new ones. And then I have the new ones written down here. And although you can't read my writing, if you wanna follow along, if you have a notebook, get that out so you can take some notes while I'm doing this because I don't want you to miss something. And I will be doing a kiln opening on Sunday at noon Eastern. And so I'll share all these results you're gonna see right now. So you won't miss out totally, but if you watch this, you'll see how I apply. And then you watch the kiln opening, you'll have that. So this is my glaze test book. And yes, I know I keep leaves in it too because it is perfect for that. So here I have my notes when I do a glaze firing and I will make a new page. This was the last one I did. And er, 
is stuck together. Sometimes glaze gets on the page. So I'll do a new one here. I will write the name of the piece and what the glaze is. And sometimes I'll write a little number or something on it so I know. But often I can tell each piece is a little different. You know, this is um, like a bubble bowl or right here. So I know what that looks like. And then the other bowl will just be other bowl. <laughs> and I'll write other bowl on my test sheet. So uh, I'll have all my information here. And then that way, when I unload the kiln, I can go through and make notes and, you know, things I want to try again, I can try again and things that didn't work out, I can try to figure out why they didn't work out and I can do them over. Now, Amico online, if you go to Amico Brent's website, so if you go to that page, you will find they have a layering um, application there and you can click on a glaze and see what it looks like with another glaze. So this is a folder that they give out at conferences and information sheet that I just put it into sheets in my three ring binder, just sheet protectors. And that way I know exactly what I'm going to get if I'm using one of their, this is the Jade Celadon and all the combos I can get. So this is a really great combination. So I see that ancient copper and textured turquoise make a beautiful combo. Do you know, I actually have that for a mug. Ancient copper with, with textured turquoise, but I'm gonna add some oatmeal in it too. A little oatmeal to help it melt and come together. So we'll be doing that on a mug if we have time. It, hopefully we will. All right, we're gonna start with using the new colors. I want the June bug and I want the blue spark. Now the vintage gold, all of these are food safe except the vintage gold. So if you're gonna use this on food wear, I would use it on the outside of our mugs. I would use it on something sculptural like this. This is a planter. I would use it on this planter and I actually am going to glaze this in the vintage gold. So just keep that in mind. If you wanna use it on a mug, just keep it away from the rim. Start down here with it and do another glaze that you know is food safe on the rim. So do your vintage gold down here and the rest up there. So these have been waxed, that's what the pink is, and they are ready to rock and roll. So let's glaze up some plates. I have got my banding wheel. I have got a couple different style brushes. I think I'm gonna be using a fan brush a lot today. Most people can get a hold of these easily, so that's why I'm gonna be working with them. Just, to, just so that the tools I'm using are something you can get a hold of. And I'm just gonna swirl my brush in a bucket of clean water and then squeeze out the excess. So the, the June bug and all the metallics, they are really easy to work with and they are lovely and they have a, a bit of the, the metallic -y shimmer. So you wanna use it on something that will really highlight that. And that really would be something smooth without texture. Because when you have the texture, it breaks up the surface. So you're gonna to wanna to do something like the plate I'm about to glaze. That's all smooth. And this is the June bug. And I have a few bottles of this, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna glaze until I run out of glaze. And then, and then I don't know what we'll do. We'll, t we'll tell stories. So I'm just gonna apply, on the back, I'm gonna do two coats because this will really be a test plate. So I will see what two coats looks like. So we got our first. I would consider this one coat even though I overlapped a bit. And I'm not gonna glaze the very center. I signed it and my name's in there. I'm just gonna leave that as is. So we're just gonna clean that off. Wipe the glaze off the foot. Even though it's waxed, you're still gonna want to remove the glaze that's on there because just because it's waxed it won't stop the glaze from sticking to your kiln shelf so take that glaze off uh, someone has the oatmeal so oatmeal is a glaze and it's a really beautiful glaze on its own but when you put it on top of another one it tends to cause the glazes to flux a bit that's melt and come together and I want to use that because I want those ancient copper and the textured turquoise to really blend together. So I'm gonna open the blue spark. And these are little two ounces. 
So you'll get to do a couple test pieces with these. You'll get to do a test plate like I'm doing, and you probably can do a test tile. And I flipped that when I was opening it. Look what I did. <laughs> scrub, scrub, scrub. There, happens. We make messes, right? All right, so I'm just gonna point out that June Bug and Blue Spark look exactly the same in their bottles color-wise. They will change um, as they get fired, but you wanna make sure whatever you're glazing, you know what this is, because you don't wanna mess up and put the wrong glaze on. So often what I will do, you guys are gonna get all my glaze secrets. I'm gonna give it all to you. I will take an index card and I will cut it up and I'll make a little tab. Now, sometimes I will just recycle these and I'll have a drawer full of these little tabs, but this will say June Bug. And what will happen is this will move with this plate through the entire process until I'm done. And then when it, when it goes over, after it's glazed and finished and it goes over to go in the kiln, I can just tuck this back in my drawer and use it for that. So the next one is, what I say? Blue Spark, right? And sometimes I will do this when I'm planning out my glazing and I will lay it on an unglazed piece. So I will have labels on all my pieces in the studio. Uh, a little OCD I know, but this makes for better glazing. Sometimes when we get to our studios and we look at all those pots and you're like, oh, what am I gonna glaze these things? So this way you know, right? Second coat, just gonna apply that and I'm just following along on the sides, going back and forth a bit just to blend the glaze, but I'm not, I'm not going up and down. I'm just doing a nice smooth. And you see how nice the fan brush is for working with the glaze? And we'll just smooth that there. Rinse our sponge off. I do always give away my secrets, don't I? It's true. Well, you know, because I, I this is the thing, when I was learning there was no YouTube, there was no online pottery classes, there wasn't even Facebook. So there was no way to share what we were making. You just had to figure it out yourself. And I had nobody, I had nobody to ask except my professor who was like, try it and see. That's all I would get. I didn't actually get answers, which is a good way to teach, but can be a little frustrating. So a lot of the things I share with you are tips and techniques that I've kind of developed and found that work for me over the years. And if it helps you, great, you know? Um, if it's something that you don't think you'll use, then just leave it, don't worry about it. Just go on and, and you know, you take what you can use and leave the rest, right? So we've got one coat all the way around and now I'm just gonna get my edge. And we're gonna do three coats of the June Bug on the front. So while that's drying, I'm gonna set this to the side, right next to its little tab. So it's over here, it's over there. And then I'm gonna grab the one that I'm gonna do blue spark. I'm gonna scrub my banding wheel down. I got my blue spark ready. Yeah. So uh, Dee says, I've discovered that some of the Amico Celadons, cobalt, sky, ice, uh, sky and ice hold color fairly well up to cone 10. Will mm -hmm. the pieces still be food safe if I do this on textured plates to emphasize the texture? They should be. They completely should be. Those glazes themselves are food safe and just taking them up to cone 10 shouldn't cause you any problems as long as you aren't having any glaze faults like crazing or crawling or anything. Um, I don't see a problem. No, you should be fine. And I saw someone said, do you need a kiln to do this? These are stoneware glazes. They are meant to be fired to cone five, cone six. The temperature will depend on what you're using for clay. I'm using Laguna B-Mix, which is a cone five clay. So I go to cone five, with this load I'll go to a hot cone five. So that would be a, a little hotter. So if you look at cone temperatures, it's not like 2167 is cone five and then 2168 is cone six. You usually have 30 degrees between. So you have a little room, little wiggle room there. So that will allow me to go a little hotter with these because some of the glazes, and we'll get to them later, but the copper reds really wanna be a cone six 
and I'm going to go to a five and a quarter, five and a half, but that's a little, that might be more information than you need. But yes, these glazes are meant to go in a kiln. So now we're going to do the center. So we did one coat on our other plate. This will be our first coat on this plate. And this is a way when you're glazing, you can have multiple pieces being glazed at the same time instead of waiting for one to dry. So by having my little note, little note tags there. So there's one good coat and let's get the side here. So how do you do a hot cone five? So like I was mentioning, if cone five is 2167 and you have 30 degrees before you get to cone six, you have a little play in there. So if you do a five minute hold on your kiln, it's gonna push the temperature up just a bit more. So you'll be able to do it through a hold. Let's go ahead and do our, our second coat on. Did I do two coats on the June bug? Somebody out there must've been paying better attention than I. I think I did, because this first coat absorbed in so fast. I did do two coats on the June bug. Yes, now that I think about it. So you can always do a hold on your kiln and the cones measure heat work. That's temperature and time. And that really is the truest way to measure what your kiln is getting to as far as glaze temp because cones melt at the same temperatures at, as glazes. So if you really wanna know what your kiln is getting to, you need to fire it with cones in there. Okay, I'm gonna take this one off. That's our blue spark. Let's pull our June bug back. Got a little area here, a little white spot. That's because I must have had wax on my finger when I was waxing and I got a little bit on the plate. It'll be okay. I may end up with a spot that's not glazed when it's all said and done because the wax will repel the glaze. But because this is a test plate, I am not stressing it. And I have to tell you, these plates already have a home. They're gonna be, <laughs> do, you, do you guys wanna guess? I'm using the glaze June Bug. And what in my life is named June Bug? And that'll, that'll give you all the answer. <laughs> oh, do we have Amazon brushes on our, uh, fan brushes on our Amazon page? Hmm, good question. I can't remember, but make a note, Kev. Let's add them. I can check now. He's, gonna, he's like, I could just look right now. Awesome. He's gonna check for us. Cat dishes, exactly. They're going to be cat dishes. They'll be cute. So they're cute, too, you know. We always need cat dishes because cats get into mischief. And cats like to knock their dishes off the counter. And they break. So my cats go through dishes uh, kind of fast. <laughs> this is a number four. And a number six would be a good one, too, Kev, if you're adding fan brushes to the shop. A four and a six? Yeah, those are good sizes. And you could go smaller if you're doing small pieces. If they have a set of like a two, four, and six, that would be a good combo. So if you guys are looking for a combo, that would be a good one. So we've got the June bug on the other plate and the blue spark on this one, three coats of each. But don't we want to know what happens if we layer these? Like what happens if we put some June bug on top of blue spark. And what happens if we put blue spark on top of June bug, right? So I'm gonna let these dry. Here's our June bug. I'm gonna sit that to the side. I'm gonna let June bug dry a bit. I am gonna let the blue spark, there's my tag, dry a bit. So once they're completely dry, I'm gonna add another coat to the rim. And while those are drying, I'm gonna switch to the vintage gold. And we're gonna do a piece with that. This piece here has a lot of beautiful texture on it. This is my lattice flourish pattern. And this right here is a planter. It actually was my class, a centerpiece planter class that I did. And at the end I said, you could make a butterfly because I show you how to make those little lobes, which are actually, let's see if I got them. These, just smaller, right? The air fern holder, but smaller. And we attach them and put a bottom on it and we make a butterfly. So I don't show you how to make the butterfly, I show other shapes, but now you know how to do the butterfly. 
And the inside, um, I think, you know what I'm gonna quickly do? Because the vintage gold is a really sparkly, pretty glaze, if I use it on the inside here, I'm sort of wasting this beautiful glaze on the inside because I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put plants in here and I really want, I really don't wanna waste. So I think what I'll just do on the inside is what color shall we do? I'm thinking I might use, we have gold. How about, what do we think about river rock or the blue stone? Let me grab blue stone. Let me grab that. It's my little box of glazes gone. They're there. Let's do blue stone on the inside. I think that'll be a nice combo. So we're going to do that. The air fern holders make great gifts. They do. And you know what? You can use them and put a LED votive in there or an LED tea light and hang them on your wall and you could do a wall of them. So you have a whole bunch of them on the wall with the little votives in there. It would look really cute. That was my initial plan when I made them and I still have yet to do it for my, my own self. So this is the blue stone. We're gonna put that on the inside. Honestly, for planters, do you have to finish the inside? Uh, you don't really have to. I do, but you don't have to. So if you're worried about not having enough material, you could leave it unglazed. I just really like to finish everything, so I'm gonna glaze it. I think they're very pretty. I think they will look good together. That blue with gold, yeah. So we're just starting at the bottom and then just pulling up the sides. And this would be how I would glaze the inside of any planter or, or any type of thing like this. You get the rim. And I start with the inside first and then I'll do the sides. I'm so excited for this. Can you hear my bisque kiln running? I unloaded one and loaded one right back up. So I'm gonna have tomorrow two kilnfuls of bisque. Is it okay not to use food safe glazes on the interior of planters? Yes, yeah, yeah. It just, because our concern is when you're eating something acidic and it's on a piece that's not food safe, the acidic food usually tends to pull out materials. If you're drinking water out of something that's not food safe, you're really not going to have a problem because the water itself won't pull out anything. It won't cause that leaching. So a planter, unless you're using something really acidic, is not going to pull out whatever's in the glaze. And also, I don't think it crosses over the amount of minerals or material that's in here will cross over into a plant. Yeah, I think you're fine. But I am using the blue stone, which is food safe on the inside, either way. So if you're concerned about that, my suggestion is to not even have it as an issue and use a glaze that is food safe, and then you don't have to worry at all. It covers everything. I put a good set that includes uh, four and a six with a couple other sizes in the brushes category all right. in the shop. So Kevin put some of those. Did you put the link up too? And he put the link up, yay. And those of you on Instagram, it's just amazon.com slash shop slash clay share. We have a little shop of items, supplies, tools, pet toys, gardening books, you know, all the things we all need in life. Two coats of the blue stone, and I'm gonna stop with the blue stone there because I wanna get onto this vintage gold. I'm going to swish out this, put the blue stone over there. So I've already cleaned my brush. Done. Easy. So now we're going to go to that vintage gold. I'm going to use the same brush I was just using. I have so many pieces I want to glaze. We'll see if I get there. <laughs> it's a little thick, but that's okay. Let it be. Um, I'm not going to thin this down. Often when they come out of the bottle, just stir it up and sometimes that'll help thin it out. And sometimes they're supposed to be a little thick. Let's flip this over now. How do you do a hold on a kiln sitter kiln? That is a wonderful question. And for uh, over 10 years of my pottery career, career, all I had was a kiln sitter kiln. And the way I did it is you have to be there 
when your kiln shuts off. And what you do is if you have a kiln sitter kiln, you're familiar with what happens. When the bar drops, it triggers the shutoff mechanism. So you have to be there when your kiln is getting close to temp. And when it goes to drop, you need to actually, what I used to do is I would be there with my hand and I would catch it and wait five minutes, set a timer and just wait five minutes. Now you could apply a piece of tape to it to hold it, to keep it from going down, but that is dangerous because I don't want anybody to get in the habit of doing that and leaving their kiln because the kiln sitter shuts off as a safety mechanism. So you would just hold it manually for five minutes and then let go and you would release it. There are many nights that my kilns I start in the morning and I finish in the evening usually. And there are many times that I would be out here at 11 or two in the morning waiting for my kiln to finish up and then I'm sitting there holding the kiln sitter bar, the little trigger, <laughs> and waiting for it to finish that five minutes. But you can still do it, yeah. It's easier when you can program one in, but you could still do it with a manual kiln. So there's one coat of the vintage gold. I'm gonna put three on. I really want to bring out all the gold I can. And these glazes from Amico, it will say on each package, on each bottle, how to use them. But the, the best I find is three coats. I see that. Or you can get a Kiln Master wall mount, mount control box and turn your manual into a digital kiln. There you go. You could do that if you want to upgrade your kiln um, or if you're in the market for getting a new kiln like I was last year and I got my brand new L&L, which I love beyond, I, I didn't know I would love my kiln so much. I've had three other kilns and this one is maybe my favorite. It's just so reliable, but Clayscapes Pottery is doing a deal where if you buy a kiln and a furniture kit, you get a Genesis controller upgrade, which is what I have, and it connects you to the app. So yes, there's an app for that. You can watch your kiln fire on the app. I got a question from the site. Sure. Uh, do you glaze all the way to the bottom? Do these glazes mm. not run? The Amico glazes uh, are pretty stable. What I will do is usually the first coat and often the second I go right to the bottom, but you'll also see me wiping. And when I wipe back, I will wipe just a tiny bit up the side. And then my third coat, I will come up at least a quarter of an inch so I don't go all the way to the bottom. And then if I'm doing a layered, a second color on top, I definitely don't go down. I don't usually go down below half of the piece just to make sure I don't have any issues with running. But I will take my sponge like I'm doing here and I will wipe kind of rounding over the edge. And I could have applied my wax rounded over the edge too. So these are the two coats. I'm gonna flip it over and do the third coat, but I won't go all the way to the bottom. That's a good question. So you have a few sets of Amico velvet underglaze and you just noticed that a couple of them you haven't used have dried up. Can you reconstitute them? You can. So just add a little bit of water and then you gotta let it set, usually overnight, check it, see if it's enough water. If you can stir it, stir it. If it still seems a little too thick, add a tiny bit more water, but you don't wanna to add too much water at once because you can make it watery. And then you have to figure out how to get the water out, right? Then you have to let it set and evaporate and nobody wants to do that. But you can reconstitute them. So we're gonna flip this over. Got a little butterfly painted on my banding wheel. Cute is that? <laughs> Hello, I see folks are joining us from Alabama where it's hot. We are in Vermont where it's not. <laughs> but you know what? Spring is on its way. It'll be here soon, I'm hoping. <laughs> so put this down and I'm gonna do the rim. Now I did do that blue stone on the rim and I'm just gonna go over. So the rim of this is actually gonna have blue stone layered with vintage gold. I don't know what that's gonna look like, but we will find out Sunday, won't we? We shall see. And then after we do this one, I am gonna get the new copper red glazes. We're gonna use those. So I see some people even use the Amico Celadons applied to their bottoms 
on their carved name and then wipe it back so the glaze is just up in the carving and it doesn't melt. The Amico Celadon line is very stable. I wouldn't recommend, I don't want to say do that because I don't want someone to do that and have a problem, but you could do that. <laughs> But I don't want anybody to do it and say, Jess said I could, and then it, and then they have an issue. I don't want that to happen. So, um, you know, just like everything, test and be aware of what may happen. So I'm going almost to the bottom, but not quite on the side here. And after this is completely dry, I will wipe the bottoms really well again, right before I put it in the kiln, and make sure there's no glaze on the bottom of the pot, and make sure there's no glaze... Not, not a lot of glaze around that, that one eighth of an inch on the bottom. Okay. I think that's good. That's three good coats, right? Is it? Maybe. I'm so, sometimes I want to make sure I really got it on, but I think I did. Okay, so that's the vintage gold. I'll put that one to the side. And our little plates with the blue spark and the June bug have dried enough for us to start working on those so we can finish those and then we'll move on to the copper reds. So I'm gonna grab this with clean hands on the inside so I don't touch the outside, so I don't mess up the glaze. So we're just gonna lift this up like that and I'm gonna transfer it over here to my counter. Let's clean this off. Now, the June bug. Here's the June bug. We're gonna put blue spark on the rim of June bug. And I'm gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna mess everybody up. Actually, no, I'll do it with a fan brush because I would normally switch, but you all might not have another brush. So I'm gonna keep it with this. And I see Paul saying some people wanna go live in clay, sh clay shares. They should, you know, right now, a lot of us are at home. I'm very lucky my studio is at home. Many of you have your studios at home as well. So if you want to go live in the Clay Sharers group, if you're in there, do it, please, by all means. You know, this is what we're all about. We're about sharing our studios. And if you want to do it, but you don't know where to start, I got some suggestions for y'all. A great place to start is to share a studio tour, even if your studio is just a little corner in a guest room or just a little corner in a garage or basement, that's fine, share it. We wanna see. And some folks I know, maybe they don't want to share their own work, but maybe they want to share their collection of pottery. Maybe you collect other potters work, so you could share that. Or you could share work you've made in the past. It's a nice way to introduce yourself and to put your work out there. So there's one coat of the blue spark on the June bug. And now we're going to grab the blue spark and put the June bug. I'm going to put two coats. So how do you make a brushing glaze usable when it paints on chalky and dries as you're painting? So you could try adding some gum solution to it to help it flow better. CMC gum. You can pick up some of that and just add the tiniest bit to your container and see if that helps you because that's what you know is often used to help a glaze flow to make it more paintable. So there's the June bug. So the fan brush does a pretty nice job. You see this nice line I'm getting? I don't know how crisp that line will be after firing. We might have a really crisp line. It might melt a little bit, which I think is nice. So we'll see what happens. It's all testing. Because this is the first time using these colors for all of us, right? Okay, this has to dry. I am gonna do one more coat of it, but I wanna let it dry. So now I wanna go ahead and use those copper reds. And these are such an interesting glaze. Here I have the copper red and I have the flambe. So if you haven't seen these yet, let me grab my little card. The copper red, let me switch them around so they're actually lined up. And you can see these on the Amico website. So you can actually see what these look like. They've been sharing these. So the copper red is a true red right here, bright red. And then the flambe is more of a purple. So it's, it's a really beautiful glaze. And these 
work best at cone six. They like to be cone six more than cone five. You can do them at cone five, but like some glazes, they just are their best at cone six. That's why I'll do a hot cone five. So we'll see a happy medium. I'm not gonna go all the way to six. That's, I just, with the other glazes I use, they like cone five better. So we're gonna stay at cone five and a smidgen, and we'll see, we'll see where it is. When I, I'll tell you what temperature I got to, and we'll look at the cone packs when I unload my kiln on Sunday. Now these also will come out of their jars thick like pudding, and they're supposed to be. So just be aware that they are supposed to be thick, and you wanna apply them on thickly and gloppy. So that's pretty much what notes I've got from Kara about those. So I have got a bowl, and I thought about doing a small, thought about doing a small test piece. I was like, well, I've never used this glaze before. I should do a test piece. Will you give me a paper towel? I wanna clean any residue off this from the other glaze. So I was gonna do a little test tile, <laughs> but um, we're gonna go right into a bowl. Did I enjoy teaching? I, uh, yeah, I'm still teaching, right? I'm still teaching today. I, I taught for many years. I, you know, taught all levels. I've told art, taught uh, art enrichment programs at, for K through 12. I have taught community clay centers. I was a college professor um, most recently, and then the university shut down the clay program. So that is really what brought me to start ClayShare is after I lost my job teaching as a professor, I still needed to, you know, keep, keep at it. You have to keep working, you can't just stop. And there was no jobs near me. There was no professor, you know, being a ceramics professor, uh, there's not a ton of openings in the southern part of Vermont, right? There's just not a lot of those jobs available. So I decided to make my own job, started teaching online. And that's what prompted me to start clayshare.com. And that has been three years now, and June will be our three-year anniversary. And in that time, I have filmed over 250 full-length classes, uh, which equals to thousands of videos, hundreds of live broadcasts. I don't even know how many live broadcasts. So many. So we are doing this bubble bowl, copper red. And I just saw a note from Drew at Clayscapes Pottery. They are going to take pre-orders for the new glazes. Oh, I'm that to the Kevin's putting that up, you guys. And they're doing free shipping. Uh, Drew, though, are you going to honor free shipping if somebody pre-orders it? That's the question. Because if people buy the glazes today, will you ship it to them for free when it comes out in May? I just want to make sure we all are on the same page. So this is the second coat of the copper red. Oh, this is a thick glaze, but you want it to be thick. It needs to be thick. You just come and be a minion in my, in my studio. <laughs> well, uh, I've had apprentices before, yes. Um, currently, my daughter works with me in the studio, and Kevin's out here, too, doing tech work. So I'm not taking any apprentices right now, but if that ever changes, I will certainly put that information up. All right, so I wiped that off. Now, this is a little tricky because I glazed it on and it's all still wet, so I can't really pull it off. So what I'm gonna do, <laughs> I'm just gonna glaze the next one and, and hold it in my hand. You got a good question. You got a good question, I love good questions. I am new to Clay Share and overall pottery. I take mm -hmm. a weekly class where they fire the pieces for us. Right. It is described as either high fire or low fire kilns. Mm -hmm. Where does the cone number fit into the term high fire or low fire? So potters, so some potters will call cone five, six mid range, but then some people will classify cone five and six as high fire because low fire temperatures are earthenware and those, those clays but these are still stonewares, although they're not going all the way to top temp as a cone 10 would. Now, I will tell you, cone 10 is 2300 degrees. Cone five is 2167. So there's only about 130 degrees difference between cone five and cone 10. There's cone 10, 2400. I have to, I have to check 
Now I have to question myself. Kev, do a search. Cone 10. Someone look that up for me on Compact. I'm oh, pretty sure. Cone 10. Cone 10. 2300, right? Because I think 24 is 12. See, I haven't done a Cone 10 in ages, but I will be doing one this summer. All right, let's go ahead and glaze. 2350. 2350. We're going to split the difference. How's that? <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and glaze with the flambe. Drew, 2350. I feel really good that I got the same number that Drew had in right. his head. Right, for cone, for cone 10. Today, I feel like a smart person. So when I go to cone 9, I'm going to 2300, which is normally what I fire. I'll sometimes go to 10, sometimes I only go to 9. It really depends on the glazes I have in the kiln when you're reduction firing, but I don't want to confuse anybody. We're talking about cone five, cone six here. So you will have to ask that clay center what exactly they mean by high fire, because everybody, sorry about that folks, I wanna make sure you can see. Everybody has different descriptions of that and I don't want you to think you can do one and you really should be doing the other. So this is two coats. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep gobbing it on a bit. So you want to apply this really thickly, and it's okay for it to be thick in the jar. So there we have two coats of the flambe. And let's see if we can go ahead and do our third coat of the copper red. And I'm going to not glaze close to the bottom. And I'm actually going to flip this over before I glaze to the rim so that I don't glaze it back on the banding wheel like I did before. So when you can't get the piece off because it's still wet, keep a paper towel underneath. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. I should have done that. That's a great suggestion. So thank you so much for that. That was from Larissa. So she'll glaze with a paper towel and then you can just scooch it off. Yeah, that's brilliant. So let's go ahead and scoop this off. We're gonna flip it over. And we'll put our last, our third coat on the outside here and get that rim nice and glazed. I might do a fourth coat on the rim after I do the inside. We'll see. We'll see where we get. Think I might need four coats, Kara? Okay, I'm so glad you're watching. It's not that thick in my jar. I know we talked about it being really thick. It's thick, but I think, I think we could go with four. So I'm gonna get one nice um, cereal bowl size bowl glazed easily with this little jar and I will have enough probably to do a test tile as well. So that's what I think you'll get out of this. You could probably get a mug too. Just going up the sides. I love having Amico in the... I know it's so good to have you all here with us today. That, that, but no pressure that I do it right. <laughs> Amico's there like, is she glazing that right? <laughs> but because this is a brand new glaze and it's really not out for production yet, um, you know, it's nice to have those tips. And I'll do a, a fourth. So we just get that inside. You see how fast the first coat dries? You can already see on the inside how we're getting that lighter, that lighter bit down there. So let's see, we're going to scoot this off now because the bottom has dried and clean off my banding wheel. So we're at least going to get through the new glazes. We might not get through anything else, but we're going to get through these. So we need to do, move my copper red out of the way, we need to do the flambe here. And I think probably I will do a fourth on this one as well. Here's a question on layering. Yeah. Can copper red and flambe be layered over each other? We don't know. <laughs> okay. Yes, they could be, I'm sure, because they're very similar. What they will look like, I don't know, because these are brand new. Um, Amico has only done some testing 
and have put out the little samples, they're not in full run production yet. So this is a preview of what they can do. And I have more. This isn't all I have. I have a couple other jars. So I will do some layering after the broadcast is over because, you know, I'm going to keep glazing even though we won't, we won't be on because we'll have Drew talking about glazes after. He comes on at 1.15, right? Or is he 1.30? 115. He's 115. All right. He's 115. So we'll have Drew on and I will be glazing while Drew's on. And then I'll be back to glaze with dipping and pouring glazes. So we'll be, we'll be doing that afterwards. So I'm putting on my rim coat. We talked about how great banding wheels are when I was glazing the other day. So where can I find the numbers for the new Amico glazes to order from Clayscapes? Deborah, I'm not sure. Maybe that's a you have to call into Drew and order them. We'll see if Drew will answer that. Or the product numbers? Mm-hmm. The product numbers. The product numbers are listed on the on the Amico sponsor page. I'll put the link for that Good. on the screen. Clean this off. I have three minutes, three minutes. This is the June bug. Let's finish up the blue spark and this one will be done. So we did layer the blue spark over the June bug and we will see what this looks like. I will layer up the flambe and the copper reds and I will continue glazing those just like you saw me doing until I have three good coats, maybe four coats on there. And we'll do two, I'm just doing two coats of the blue spark on top of the June bug. So I was gonna do it for that one. I will glaze some other things with this glaze, but for right now, we'll be done with that one. And then let's grab the blue spark and the June bug and we'll do that. Have I done mocha diffusion? Years ago I have. And if you look up dendritic slip, this is, a, so mocha diffusion is a, mm, actually a really old ceramic process used a lot in colonial times. And Heather Erickson is a potter who's been doing it for, I don't wanna say decades, cause she might think I'm dating her by saying she's been doing it for that long, but she's been doing it for a long time and she's an amazing potter. And it's called dendritic slip. And modern potters call it mocha diffusion cause it sounds cool and it is cool. And I know Kevin Kowalski does a lot of it um, he doesn't, he does do it at workshops, so you could check that out, but it's a really fun surface uh, decoration technique. But if you want to know more about it in the history, you should look it up because there's so much information out there and there's many different ways to do it. So you check that out. So there's the June bug on top of the blue spark. So we got those two plates happening. So those are ready to go. And we got all the new, and we did the vintage gold on the butterfly. So I think we're gonna switch back up and I'll show you, you can see the full mess that I've got here. <laughs> so I need to finish up my flambe. I need to do another coat of my copper red right here that I have. The June bug and the blue spark look exactly the same color in the jar. So be sure when you get them, and 10 people are gonna win these today. We're giving away 10 of the packs with the little glazes in it today. So when you get them, make sure you use some kind of a little card so you know what you've done, so you don't confuse it. And you're glazing along with June Bug and you've got your two coats on, and then you go to do your third coat and you accidentally use Blue Spark, right? So just, just keep things organized. All right, so, Thanks everybody on Instagram. I see that it's about to click out over there and everybody else, I'm so clean. Um, I am clean. The table's not too bad. The table got a little messy. So coming up at 1.15, Drew from Clayscapes Pottery is gonna be answering all your glaze questions. If you have questions about glazes, glaze faults, glaze fit, glaze temperature, holds, all those things, come and watch us again. He'll be here. And then I will be back at 2.30 dipping and pouring glazes. So come back for that. I'll be doing something entirely different and I will show you how to dip and pour, which goes much faster, but it's not better, it's just different. So we'll be doing that 
at 2.30. And then at four, we'll have the giveaway. So don't miss that. At four o'clock, we are gonna give away the 10 packs of Amico glaze samples, three of my texture rollers. I know everybody's been waiting for this, right? This prize and one premium membership for clay share a year long and i have something else i'm gonna give i got a little something but i'm not telling you you have to come back and see what it is so we're gonna pull in we're gonna have to pull an extra name because somebody's gonna get something else okay all right you guys i will catch you in a bit be sure to come back at 1 15 to see drew and i will see you back at 2 30. bye everyone i'm gonna keep